I don't know why they chipped his stone. Uh, General Meade. Well, a lot of people, you read the contemporary history and they say, well, he was a bookish fellow. Well, yeah, he was. He had a very high articulate ability. Uh, he could speak many languages. He was fluent in French. Uh, in the old days, uh, everybody spoke a little German because we had so many Germans around. And everybody was doing commerce with the butcher and, and the baker and uh, the beer maker. So everybody spoke a little French, a little German, uh, a little of everything. So he was able to communicate well. Uh, what comes to my mind is when they had the Army of Potomac and he was a general in the Army of Potomac, they were always sending the foreign officers to visit General Meade. Nobody else really wanted to be bothered because they couldn't speak Russian or French or Italian. So they sent the foreign officers over to General Meade's tent so he could be the host. Now, when he was doing that, he was learning. He was learning a great deal because they, Europe had fought the Crimea War in the 1850s, 10 years before. And he was very interested in how the siege of Sebastopol went and just the whole show. And he adopted a lot of things that he had learned from the foreign officers and what he had learned about the Crimean War in the final campaigns against Richmond. And that's why he was always in favor of going down back to the peninsula and going, uh, laying a siege. Because he had learned that if you're going to defeat an uh, enemy in total, you needed to have a siege. And that, and that played out not only in the Crimea, but also at Vicksburg and Fort Donaldson and other, other places. So the big victories that were happening were were kind of based on the classical military operations that they had just finished in the Crimea, and uh, he was a student of that. And, it, and his uh, intellectual ability to talk foreign languages made him, uh, gave him the ability to really go through the notes and figure out what, what were some good uh, ways to conduct the war. So, and he, he conducted his, the war based on the principles of war. He was one of the few northern generals who did that, and that's why he was not uh, committed uh, a great deal to the frontal assault, which he thought was basically murder, and uh, you'll find uh, Robert E. Lee also uh, was a good student of the principles of war, and, uh, and if you look at the Union generals, they, they repeated a lot of stuff they'd done in the Mexican War, so there you go. Thank you very much. I'm glad it's warm today. Uh, thank you for going in. Thank you. Uh, I, I have a special announcement to make, and I'm going to call Mike Wunsch forward in the guise of John Welsh, uh, who was the uh, uh, Sanitary Commission Chair and also the uh, Centennial. And he has a special proclamation from Governor Ed Rendell, who is governor for about two more days. So, uh, he come forward. Thank you, Andrew. Welcome everybody on uh, behalf of the, uh, the membership and friends of the General Meade Society. Greetings. It gives me distinct pleasure to join with the General Meade Society of Philadelphia to honor Major George, uh, General George Gordon Meade on his 195th birthday. George Gordon Meade was an American Civil War general who was best remembered as the victor in the Battle of Gettysburg and as the commander of the Army of the Potomac. Established in 1996, the General Meade Society of Philadelphia has devoted their time to preserving the memory of this remarkable military veteran by providing educational programs and tours to many historical sites and landmarks of General Meade. For the past 11 years, the Society has also provided scholarships to deserving students at the George G. Meade Elementary School. As governor and on behalf of all Pennsylvanians, I commend the General Meade Society of Philadelphia for their commitment to preserve the memory of George Gordon Meade who is a remarkable military war hero, and it is my hope that his memory will continue to be recognized for generations. Edward G. Rendell, Governor, December 31st, 2010. He wrote that exactly the way I told him to. Thank you. No, that was very nice of, uh, of uh, Governor Rendell. Uh, this is Jerry McCormick in the guise of uh, General A.A. A. Humphreys. 
and he is the treasurer of the General Meat Society and also a very, very important member of our executive board, and I'd like him to bring some greetings too. Thank you, Andy. Um, my mission today is threefold. First of all, God, thank you for a microphone, because I know you can't hear me in the back. But, uh, first of all, you notice that this ground is clear and dry, and that is because of our friends at Laurel Hill Cemetery, in particular, Bill Doran, who's yes. here floating around here somewhere. I know he does this as a special favor to us. These guys do a phenomenal job, so thanks to Billy Doran, and he'll be mentioned later on. Round of applause. Thank you. Yeah. Round of applause. Thank you. Better, better. Okay. Now, in the guise of Andrew Humphreys, as you know, is a great confidant of George Meade and a Philadelphian and an engineer. General Humphreys celebrated his 200th birthday this year. He was born in 1810. And I want to thank everyone who came out to Gettysburg and Remembrance Day for a tremendous, tremendous cemetery to honor a great gentleman. And I'll say it again, a great uh, author, Jeffrey Work, is a friend of mine I've been communicating with, said, he is a very, very underrated and most respected general, Andrew Humphreys. And on the third note, from the General Meade Society, I want to say thanks again for contributing this year. And in spite of a rotten year, the General Meade Society was able to keep afloat, and it's only because of the contributions from you, paying your dues and giving us the donations. And one of our key drives that's been for 10 years is to provide a scholarship fund for a student at the Meade School. And none of us could be more proud this year than to announce to you, if you don't know it already, that we have finally awarded our first scholarship to a young gentleman by the name of Demetrius Kreisberg, who graduated from the Meade School in 2006 and is now enrolled at ITT Technical Institute in King of Prussia. It was very, very rewarding for all of us after all of the waiting that we finally were able to award to help this young man. So again, our scholarship drive is very important, and we want you to be a part of it. And you can be a part of it today. Now, how do you do that? We have a basket of cheer, which a lot of you are interested in. It's right back there on the table. $2 a ticket, three for five or six for 10. All the proceeds from that help to get another $1,000 for another student at the Bead School. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I knew you'd get the, uh, the financial.